I have all 32 NHL teams on this board, except every single team is going to have everyone in their prime. How it's going to work is we're going to have one team coming out of each division. Once we're down to our final four, the Central is going to take on the Pacific, while the Metro is going to take on the Atlantic, similar to the Eastern and Western Conference Finals. Once that's been decided, the best team out of the West is going to be taking on the best team in the East. So let's get right into this as we have our first matchup, the Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Nashville Predators. One of the faces of the Chicago Blackhawks is back in his prime as Jonathan Taves is back up to a 90 overall, and he's going to have Tyler Johnson at his side who's jumping back up to an 85 overall. Look at the defense Seth Jones is going back to his Columbus Blue Jacket stays as he's jumping back up to an 88 overall well in between the pipes we're gonna have 85 overall Peter Mrazek because there was one season when he was that guy looking at the forward court for the National Predators we're gonna see Ryan Johansson moving back up to an 87 overall while the defense is gonna see Ryan McDonough improve to an 86 overall while the goaltending situation staying the exact same with UC Soros holding it down at an 89 overall Tyson Berry's getting the goal scoring started in the first period and after a scoreless second Chicago was gonna make the comeback but Nashville is gonna be picking up two late goals so they still lead into the final second seconds and that one goal is gonna be the difference maker as Nashville's taking down Chicago 3-2 and as a reward for beating the Chicago Blackhawks the Nashville Predators are gonna be adding Jonathan Tapes to the team at a 90 overall and the rule for this video is you have to select a player that's now back in their prime so guys like Austin Matthews, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl who are currently in their prime cannot be stolen away. Moving over to the Pacific Division we have our next matchup as the Los Angeles Kings are gonna be taking on the Calgary Flames. LA is gonna see some improvements to the forward course, Kopitar is up to a 90 overall while Victor Arvidsson is gonna be jumping up to an 85 overall. The defense is also gonna be getting some massive of upgrades as Alex Edler's up to an 85 overall and Drew Doughty's back in his prime as a franchise defenseman he's a 92 overall but sadly there's gonna be one issue for the LA Kings as they trade Jonathan Quick away so now they're gonna have to rock with Jonas Corpuso at an 83 overall the Calgary Flames used to have one of the worst contracts in the entire league but now it doesn't look that bad as Lucic is up to an 86 overall and Jonathan Huberto I'm also gonna be giving him a plus two overall boost to a 91 representing what he was last season the defense is looking fairly similar with no one getting any major upgrades but in between the pipes we're gonna see Jacob Markstrom jumping back up to an 89 overall also before we get to our next matchup if you did not predict the florida panthers making it all the way to the stanley cup final then you have to subscribe so that means 99.9 percent .9 you have to subscribe because i know for a fact that none of you thought they were getting there and also if you're part of the 75 percent people that aren't sub to the channel what are you doing subscribe right now it's free and it helps more than you can imagine after a scoreless first period, Quentin Byfield's going to be scoring the lone goal in the second, so we're entering the final 20 minutes in a 1-0 game. And after Victor Arvidsson picked up the second goal of the game for the LA Kings, Calgary's fighting back. They're going to be scoring three unanswered, and they've got a one-goal lead hanging into the final minute. And it looks like that one-goal lead's going to be enough for the Calgary Flames as they're taking down the LA Kings 3-2. And with them beating the LA Kings, going to be adding Drew Doughty to the defense. Moving over to the Eastern Conference, we've got the Columbus Blue Jackets taking on the New York Rangers. The Columbus Blue Jackets aren't really going to be seeing too many upgrades from their forward court, as Johnny Hockey's going to be the only guy moving up, and he's now a 91 overall. The defense is going to be staying the exact same and so is the goaltending. So basically this team already has everyone in their prime except for Johnny Hockey and they finished second last in the entire league. But to be fair this entire team was hurt last season and they had like what 40 million dollars tied into their IR? You just got unlucky. Nothing you can say about that. Moving over to the New York Rangers. The two guys they picked up at the trade deadlines are now back in their prime. Patty Kane's up to a 94 overall while Vladimir Tarasenko's up to an 89. The defense is also going to be seeing some upgrades as Jacob Trouba is up to an 87 overall and he's back in his Winnipeg Jets form and holding it down in between the the pipes of course is going to be Igor Shosturkin but Yaroslav Halak's getting that nice upgrade and he's up to an 86 overall so for some reason if Shosturkin ever gets pulled in the game you got a great goaltender backing him up. After a scoreless first period Nico Mikola is going to be picking up the first goal of the game but in the third period Columbus is making the comeback and they're going to be picking up two goals and in the final seconds of this game Igor Shosturkin is going to cost them the game because he's going to decide to skate to the bench at this exact moment. At least wait till you have full control of the puck or you're out of the defensive zone. Like bro that was just a terrible decision what were you thinking? And because of that mishap from Shesterkin, Patrick Kane's going to be heading over to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Moving on over to the Atlantic Division, we're going to see Montreal taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. We got ourselves a Stanley Cup rematch. The Montreal Canadiens are going to see a ton of guys getting upgrades, such as Jonathan Drouin, Sean Monahan, Brendan Gallagher, Josh Anderson, and Mike Hoffman, and that's just for the forward core. The defense, on the other hand, that's not really going to be improving too much, so they got to roll with what they got. But in between the pipes, they're going to see a massive upgrade as Carey Price is back in his prime. Looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning, a majority of their forward core is still in their prime, but now you have guys like Corey Perry and Patrick Maroon that are back in their prime. And looking at the defense we got ourselves a legend 88 overall brett Seabrook. yeah he's on tampa's long-term ir so technically he's a member of the tampa bay lightning so i think we're starting to figure out that arizona might not have a terrible team and in between the pipes they still have vasilevsky so i think they're still in a good position eric chernak's gonna be picking up the first goal of the game early in the first period after a score of the second period brandon hagel's gonna be picking up a goal at the four minute mark and tampa's entering the final seconds in a 2-0 game and just in case two goals isn't enough for the tampa bay lightning tanner janot's gonna be picking up the empty netter and tampa's taking this one three nothing there's probably only about three teams in the entire league that would be passing on Carey Price and Tampa just happens to be one of them as they have Vasilevsky so we're going to be adding Sean Monaghan to the forward core. Heading back over to the central division the St. Louis Blues are ready to go on the attack next and they're going to have to take on the Winnipeg Jets. St. Louis 
isn't really going to be seeing any upgrades to their forward cores. The only guy gaining an improvement is Braden Shen. He's up to an 87 overall. And looking at the defense, it's looking pretty stagnant as well. But Tori Krug and Colton Paranko are also going to be back up to 87 overalls. And you know who else is back up to an 87 overall? Jordan Bennington. For those one and a half seasons, he was that guy. One of the best in the entire league. He just didn't have a very long prime. But in his prime... I would say an 87 overall is a fair rating. Looking at the Winnipeg Jets, the entire first line is going to be getting an upgrade. Kyle Connor's up to a 91, Shifley's up to an 89, and Blake Wheeler, he's going to be a 90. And they're also getting some help on their bottom six as Sam Gagne is up to an 81. They're not going to be seeing any major upgrades to the defense, nor the goaltending, but they still have 91 overall Connor Halbuck as their starter, so I think they'll be okay. But maybe not, because St. Louis is going to be coming out hot in the first period as they're picking up the first two goals of the game. But in the second, Winnipeg's going to be responding, and we have a tie game entering the final 20 minutes. St. Louis would take the lead early in the third period, but Winnipeg is going to be able to respond with two goals so they're going to be taking down my St. Louis Blues in a 4-3 win. Obviously we know this is incredibly unrealistic and if I wanted to make this video realistic I would have made Benner a 99 overall because he was him. Since Winnipeg could use a bit of help on their defense I'm going to be adding 87 overall Colton Pranko to their team. Moving on to our next match we're going to see the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. So we're not going to see too much changing with Edmonton. Bukestad's going to be getting a bit of an upgrade to an 82 overall while on the defense we're going to see Darnell Nurse moving up to an 88 overall. The goaltending situation on the Edmonton Oilers is going to be a bit of a toss up as we have 85 overall Jack Campbell and Mike Smith sharing the net together. Moving on over to the Vegas Golden Knights, we're going to see two massive improvements to their forward core as William Carlson's improving to an 86 overall while Phil Kessel's jumping up to an 87. The defense is going to see Alec Martinez return to his prime and he's back to an 85 overall while in between the pipes they have 91 overall Jonathan Quick and this is definitely going to be a tough team to stop. But it looks like Edmonton's not going to really have an issue with that because they're just going to be unanswered in the first period and they've got themselves a 3-1 lead. Three goals on six shots on prime Jonathan Quick. You hate to see it, you really do. In the second period, Edmonton and Vegas are going to be exchanging goals and the same thing's going to be happening in the third period. And with the five goals that Edmonton has, that's going to be too much for Vegas to come back from and they're going to be falling in a 5-3 game. We might have had a few questions about Edmonton's goaltending situation, but not anymore because 91 overall Jonathan Quick's joined the team. Moving back over east, we're going to see the Carolina Hurricanes taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. The biggest upgrade we're going to see for the Carolina Hurricanes is Max Patria at an 88 overall. However, they are going to see some upgrades to the bottom six with Jordan Stahl and Paul Stastny. The defense for Carolina is going to get even stronger with a 90 overall Brett Burns and an 85 overall Jake Gardner. And in between the pipes, we're going to have two guys sharing the net together, 88 overall Freddie Anderson and 86 overall Auntie Ranta. Philly's not going to be seeing quite the upgrades that Carolina got, but they're going to still have JVR jumping up to an 85 overall and Cam Atkinson jump up to an 86. The defense is seeing a slight upgrade with Rasmus versus the Lion not being a complete liability like he usually is. And in between the pipes, they got Carter Hart, but I'm just not sure if he can hold it down with the weak defense in front of him. Max Petre is going to start the goal scoring off with one late in the first period, but Philly's going to be responding with two of their own, so they're entering the second intermission with a 2-1 lead. In the third period, Philly and Carolina would be exchanging some goals, but in the final second, Sean Couturier is picking up the empty netter and Philly's taking this one. With Philly's defense being as weak as it is, we gotta bring in a prime defenseman and that's gonna be Brett Burns. We're heading over to the Atlantic once again, the Toronto Maple Leafs are gonna have their hands full with the Boston Bruins. Toronto's forward core is gonna gain a bit of grit as 84 overall Wayne Simmons has joined the team, while on the defense end, we're gonna have Mark Giordano and Jake Muzzin back in their primes. And you know who else is back in his prime? Matt Murray, and he's gonna be holding it down in net at an 87 overall. So if you thought the Boston Bruins couldn't get any better, of course they are. Burge Run's getting an upgrade, so is Krejci, Taylor Hall, and Nick Felino. Because there was that one season how many years ago where Nick Felino picked up 70 points. Still haven't figured out how that happened, but here we are. The defense is looking fairly similar with no one getting any major upgrades, and the goaltending situation, Linus Allmark's still going to hold it down for this team. In the first period, we're going to see goals from Wayne Simmons, Charlie Coyle, and Austin Matthews, so Toronto's entering the intermission with a 2-1 lead. And it looks like two goals is going to be enough for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but in case it isn't, William Nylander's going to pick up the empty netter, and Toronto's taking this one 3-1. With Toronto already having a bunch of amazing center depth there's one clear choice Patrice Bergeron because why not have four number one centers on one team we're back in the central division the Arizona Coyotes are going on the attack next and they got the Dallas Stars to take on now Arizona things have finally worked out for you taking on all these bad contracts finally means something because Voracek Brian Little and Andrew Ladder are all back in their prime and you know who else is back in his prime Shea Weber 92 overall Shea Weber honestly you don't even deserve this I didn't even feel like upgrading these guys that's kind of the whole point of the video so I had to but even with these four guys now back in their primes you're still not a good team. And that says a lot about this franchise. The Dallas Stars are going to be seeing some solid upgrades and Jamie Benn jumping up to a 90 overall while Tyler Sagan's going up to an 89. The defense is looking fairly similar, but you did get an upgrade in Ryan Suter and he's now up to an 86 overall. While in between the pipes, you still have Jake Ottinger and we already know what he can do. He can allow goals in the first 40 seconds because Andrew Ladd's getting on the board first. That's a tough look. And the only thing worse than that is that goal from Andrew Ladd's going to end up being the winner and Dallas is falling in a 1-0 game. You just lost to Andrew Ladd. Ain't no way. This video was recorded before the Dirty Cross check. Allegedly, he tried to catch himself with his stick. That's possibly one of the dumbest things I've ever heard from an NHL
NHL player, and I've heard a lot of dumb things said from NHL players. We got another matchup in the Western Conference, and that's going to be the Vancouver Canucks taking on the Seattle Kraken. We aren't really going to see any upgrades to their forward core besides Brock Besser jumping up to an 86 overall. Similar to the forward core, nothing really here is changing except Oliver Ekman Larson is jumping up to an 86, and holding it down in goal for the Vancouver Canucks is going to be Thatcher Demko. But we already knew that. Moving on over to the Seattle Kraken, Jordan Everly's getting the biggest upgrades. He's jumping up like two or three overalls to an 86. So not too much is changing with this team. And looking at the defense, Adam Larson's up to an 85 now. Yeah, no, this team barely changed whatsoever. To be fair though, they've also haven't been in the league that long, so they don't have a ton of terrible contracts. And most of the time, the terrible contracts are the guys that aren't in their primes anymore. Most of the time, not all the time though. But just because the forward and defensive core aren't seeing any upgrades doesn't mean the goaltending isn't. As Philip Grubauer's up to an 87 overall, and back him up is going to be 85 overall Martin Jones but it looks like the goaltending for Seattle is not going to be good enough because Vancouver is going to be potting three in the first period and they're going to keep on rolling scoring another two in the second and then in the third period they've just picked up their eighth goal of the game yeah so it's pretty safe to say Seattle's not coming back in this one let's just get this game over with and move on seeing as Vancouver just dominated as much as they did they probably should earn two players away from the Seattle Kraken but that's not how things work around here so the only guy they're going to be claiming is Jordan Eberle the New Jersey Devils are going to be the next team on the attack and they're going to be taking on the Washington Capitals New Jersey's not really going to be seeing too many upgrades to their forward core with Andre Platt being the only guy getting an upgrade and he's going up to an 85 overall. The defense is looking the exact same, no changes here and that's the same with goaltending. The Washington Capitals are going to be a completely different story. Ovi's up to a 95, Backstrom's up to a 90, TJ Oshie's an 85, this team's getting upgrades across the board. Well I shouldn't say across the board because the defense is looking the exact same and so is goaltending. So the forward core is getting a massive upgrade and that's about it. But it looks like that's all they're going to need because Connor Brown and TJ Oshie are picking up goals in the first period and then Evgeny Kuznetsov is expanding that lead so Washington now has a 3-0 lead heading into the third period but of course the Washington Capitals are gonna be a bunch of clowns here after scoring their fourth goal of the game they're gonna allow four unanswered and now we're gonna need a bit of overtime great work boys great work halfway into overtime Washington's gonna get incredibly lucky as if Gany Kuznetsov's gonna be burying the OT winner and he's saving Washington from this massive collapse if you guys blew a 4-0 lead and then lost in overtime, I would never let you guys forget it. But luckily you didn't, so that means Andre Palat's going to be joining the team. The Detroit Red Wings are going to be on the move next, and they're going to have their hands full with the Buffalo Sabres. Out of all the teams we're going to see in today's video, Detroit's having the fewest changes. David Perron's going to be changing by about one overall. The defense is going to look exactly identical, and so is the goaltending. Maybe Nedeljkovic could have gone up one or two overalls, but besides that, Detroit has everyone in their prime. The Buffalo Sabres are going to be a different story though, as we're going to see Jeff's going to return to his prime form at 89 overall, and Kyle Post is up to an 85 overall. The defense is going to be looking fairly similar with Rasmus Dahlin leading the way, but in between the pipes, we have an elite combo here. 90 overall Craig Anderson and 90 overall Ben Bishop. Yeah, Ben Bishop's on the Buffalo Sabres. I sometimes completely forget about guys that are technically still under contract, but haven't played in like two years. So Ben Bishop, here we are. Early in the first period, Rasmussen's getting Detroit on the board and they're entering the first near mission with a 1-0 lead. But in the second, the Buffalo Sabres are waking up. Jeff Skinner's going to be potting two. Jack Quinn's got the other. So does Samuelson. And now they've got themselves a 4-2 lead. And it doesn't look like the Buffalo Sabres are done there because Jeff Skinner's going to be picking up another goal. He's got the hat trick and Buffalo's going to cruise to a 6-2 win. And as I said earlier, Detroit really didn't see anyone change in overalls. So David Prawn, with you jumping up one or two overalls, you're going to be joining the Buffalo Sabres. Heading into our final matchup in the Central Division with the Minnesota Wild taking on the Colorado Avalanche. The forward core from Minnesota is not going to be seeing too many upgrades, but on the defensive end, John Klingberg's back up to an 86 overall and Golagoski's up to an 84. And in between the pipes, you got 93 overall Marc-Andre Fleury. This team's ready to go on a bit of a run. Looking at the Colorado Avalanche, the bottom six for this team's going to get a bit better as Alex Galchenyuk's up to an 83 overall because there was a time where Alex Galchenyuk picked up 30 goals and 26 assists for 56 points in 82 games. That happened before. How times have changed. The defense is also going to be getting a slight upgrade with Eric Johnson jumping up to an 85 overall while the goaltending tandem staying the same for this team. Colorado and Minnesota are going to be exchanging goals in the first period and in the second period Nyquist is going to be scoring the first goal but Lekkanen and Bo Byram are able to respond so Colorado has a 3-2 lead entering the final 20 minutes. In the final seconds Miko Randon wants to make sure that the Colorado Avalanche have this game all wrapped up so he's going to be burying the empty netter and Colorado's taking this one forward to two. So this isn't really going to be a tough decision. Marc-Andre Fleury's coming to the team. I can't pass up on a prime Marc-Andre Fleury. It's just not possible. Our final matchup with the Pacific Division is going to see the Anaheim Ducks taking on the San Jose Sharks. Anaheim's another one of these teams that you just completely forget that these guys are still under contract. Ryan Kessler. Anaheim now has 89 overall Ryan Kessler leading the way. They're also going to see Adam Henrique return to his prime form. He's at 87 overall. But Ryan Kessler is still under contract. Moving on from that, Kevin Shinecrick's now the number one defenseman Anaheim is Eason and 87 overall and John Gibson he's getting a slight boost to a 90 overall. We aren't really going to see any improvements for the San Jose Sharks in their forward core but the defensive core is a complete different story. Mark Edward Vlasic he's back up to an 84 overall he's ready to rule and Eric Carlson he's a 94 overall. So it doesn't really matter what happens after this matchup because Eric Carlson's either staying with the San Jose Sharks or he's off to Anaheim. So no matter what we're going to see
see this man in the second round. Also, James Reimer's in between the pipes, but that doesn't really matter. San Jose is going to take a 2 0 lead in the first period, but Kevin Shattenkirk's going to be able to score a late one, so he's keeping this a 2 1 game. Someone scored in the second period, but I forgot who it was, so here's Henry Stickman dancing. That's an average stick on the ice viewer right there. You love to see it, you really do. San Jose and Anaheim would be exchanging goals in the third period, but it's not going to be enough. San Jose is going to be burying the empty netter, and they're taking this one 5 2. It's a pretty clear choice who we're going to be adding to San Jose, and that's going to be John Gibson. This team needs a goaltender. Time to finish up the Eastern Conference. We're going to have the New York Islanders taking on the Pittsburgh Penguins. The New York Islanders might not be getting a ton of upgrades, but they are getting one massive one, and Zach Prize moving up to a 90 overall. The defense is going to be looking identical to what it is today, while the goaltending situation, Varlamov is getting a boost to an 89 overall but Sorokin's still going to be the number one guy here. Unlike the New York Islanders, we're going to see a ton of players on the Penguins getting upgrades. Malkin's up to a 93, Crosby's up to a 96, with Jeff Carter, he's moving back up to an 88 overall. The defense has also seen some upgrades as Chris Letang's back up to a 90 overall, but Tristan Jari's still going to be holding it down net at an 87 overall. The Penguins are going to get the scoring started off in the first period. They're picking up two goals and 17 shots, but in the second period, it's going to be all Islanders. They're picking up five goals, and that's including two from Zach Parise. Jake Getzel's going to do everything he can to keep the Penguins in this game, so he's going to pick up a power play goal half Halfway through the third period. But in the final seconds, the Pittsburgh Penguins aren't going to be able to come back into this game, and Zach Pries is going to be picking up the hat trick because he deflects this one to the back of the net. But for some reason, they're calling it a no goal. They're saying he kicked it in the back of the net. Eventually, it stands as a goal, but bro, what were you looking at? How did you think he kicked it in? With that Islanders win, they're going to be adding one of the greatest players of all time to their team, and that's going to be Sidney Crosby. Moving on over to our final matchup of the first round, we have the Ottawa Senators taking on the Florida Panthers. Stanley Cup finalist, Florida Panthers. Who would have thought? Not me. Since Ottawa's full of a bunch of young talent, they're not really going to see too many upgrades, but Claude Giroux is going to be improving to a 90 overall. Nothing's changing with the defense. That's still going to be led by Shabbat and Chikorin, and holding it down in between the pipes is going to be 85 overall Cam Talbot. The Florida Panthers are going to be seeing two major upgrades to their forward core with Eric Stahl in a 91 overall and Patrick Hornquist at an 84 overall. The defense is getting one small upgrade and Mark Stahl up to an 81 overall, and holding it down in between the pipes is, of course, a prime Sergei Barbrovsky, but the way Barbrovsky's playing in the postseason right now, he might be back in his prime form. You never know. After a scoreless first period, Patrick Hornquist is going to be picking up the first two goals of the game, but Derek Broussard is going to be able to respond, so we're entering the final 20 minutes in a one goal game. About halfway into the third period, Shane Pinto is going to be able to even this game up, and it's going to stay locked like that, so we're going to be heading into overtime. Halfway into overtime, Drake Batherson's going to pick up the puck in the neutral zone, and he's turning on the Jets game past all the defenders. He's beating Sergei Barbrovsky, and Ottawa's taking this one home. And speaking of Barbrovsky, that's who's coming to the Ottawa Senders as we're bringing him to the team. With the first round officially in the books, we're down to our final 16 teams, four from each division. We've got a ton of talent still here so let's keep on moving. With our first matchup of the second round we're going to see the Nashville Predators taking on the Arizona Coyotes. Nashville's going to get the scoring started in the first period as they're picking up two goals but in the second Arizona's going to be able to respond and they're evening this game up. There wasn't any offense in the third period so we're going to be entering overtime in a 2-2 tie. Early into the extra frame with Nashville on the power play Fabro's getting the feed he's beating the goaltender here and Nashville's going to be taking this one in an overtime win. Of course there's only one option we can take away from the Arizona Coyotes and that's Predators legend Shea Weber. Moving on over to the Pacific Division the San Jose Sharks are on the attack next and they're gonna be taking on the Vancouver Canucks. After a scoreless first period, Vancouver and San Jose are gonna be exchanging goals. Vancouver's gonna take the lead in the third period with the help of a goal from Kravitzaw, and in case that goal isn't enough, they're gonna be bearing an empty netter, so they're taking this game three to one. We already know San Jose has one of the best defensemen in the entire league on their team, so Eric Carlson, welcome to the Vancouver Canucks. Moving on over to the Metro Division, the Philadelphia Flyers are on the move next, and they're gonna be taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. After 20 minutes, we're gonna see a handful of goals, but we're still gonna be deadlocked at two after 20 minutes. Joel Faraby is going to pick up the lone goal of the second period to give Philly the lead, but in the third period, Columbus is going to be scoring a late goal to even this one up, and it's going to stay even, so we're going to need a bit of overtime. Early into overtime, Brett Burns is going to secure the puck along the boards, and he's going to send it over to Konecki. Konecki's getting a quick shot, which is surprising Corpusello. He's going to beat him, and Philly's taking another game. And with Philly stealing this one away, they're going to be adding Johnny Hockey to the team. Moving on over to the Eastern Conference, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be on the attack next, and they're taking on the Ottawa Senators. Alex Dabrinkat's going to get the scoring started in the first period, but Toronto's going to be able to respond in the second period they're picking up two goals but Shane Pinto is going to be picking up a shorthanded one so we're still all tied up. Unlike the second period the third period isn't going to see any goal scoring so we're going to need overtime once again. With four minutes left in overtime some nice passing from the Toronto Maple Leafs is going to find Lafferty in front of the net. He's beating Sergei Bobrovsky so Toronto's taking this game three to two. We already know Toronto doesn't need any more centers but luckily Claude Giroux plays center and left wing so we'll still add him to the team. Heading over to our final matchup in the central division that's going to be the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Colorado and Winnipeg are going to be exchanging goals in the first period but in in the second, Winnipeg's going to be picking up another two compared to Colorado's one, so they have the lead heading into the final 20 minutes. Winnipeg would have themselves a power play in the third period, and Mark Scheife is going to capitalize on that, so he's picking up Winnipeg's fourth goal of the game, and four goals are going to be more than enough, so they're taking this one, but not before they pick up one more goal. So they're actually taking this one 5-2. to two. And with that win from the Jets, they're going to be taking Eric Johnson away from the Colorado Avalanche. 
Our next matchup is going to see a battle of Alberta as the Calgary Flames are taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Bukestad's going to be getting Edmonton on the board first with a power play goal. In the second period, we're going to see Calgary and Edmonton exchanging goals, but Edmonton's still going to have that one goal lead entering the final 20 minutes. Once again, the third period, we're going to see Edmonton and Calgary exchanging goals, so Edmonton's going to be holding on to this one, but just in case, they're going to be picking up an empty netter in the final few seconds. With Edmonton taking down the Calgary Flames, there's one clear choice. Milan Lucic, an Oilers legend. Yes, I probably should have taken Jonathan Huberto. I didn't think about that till this exact moment, but Lucic is an Oilers legend, so we got to bring him back. We have two more matchups in the Eastern Conference, and the first one's going to be the Islanders taking on the Washington Capitals. The Islanders are going to be getting on the board first, but in the second period, Connor Brown's going to be responding, so we're entering the final 20 minutes in a tie game. So far, we've seen ourselves a great goaltending matchup, but Andre Palat's going to be the difference maker as he's picking up the third period goal to give Washington a 2-1 lead. And in the final seconds, I don't even know how TJ Oshie's scoring here. He's getting a no-look backhander off. It's beaten Sorokin, and Washington's taking this one 3-1. Washington already has a ton of talent on the forward core, but why not add some more? So Zach Prize, welcome to the team. To finish out the second round, we're going to see the Buffalo Sabres taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Kucherov's going to get the scoring started early in the first period, and in the second, the Tampa Bay Lightning continue to push. They're picking up another two goals. And in the third period, two more goals. Yeah, so this game's all wrapped up, but before we end, why not have Sean Monaghan score one more? With that win from the Tampa Bay Lightning, we're going to be bringing on another great goal scorer, so Jeff Skinner, welcome to the team. Here we are in the third round, we're down to our final eight teams, and our first matchup's going to see the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Nashville Predators. So Winnipeg's going to forget how hockey works in the first period, and they're only going to take four shots, so Nashville now has themselves a 2-0 lead. Winnipeg's really folding like that. You hate to see it. In the second period, Winnipeg would continue to take more shots, but they're not going to be able to score any goals, and Nashville, they're going to be picking up another two so they've got themselves a 4-0 lead. Shea Weber's going to be able to pick up an early goal in the third period, and I think it's safe to say there's not a chance Winnipeg's coming back in this game, so Nashville's taking this one 5-0. Nashville could use a bit more firepower for their offense, so I'm bringing in Blake Wheeler. Moving over to our matchup in the Pacific Division, we're going to see the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Vancouver Canucks. After a scoreless first period, Drysdale and Ryan are going to be getting Edmonton on the board, so they've got themselves a 2-0 lead. And those two goals are going to be more than enough, but just in case they aren't, Edmonton's going to be picking up one more power play goal, so they're taking this one 3-0. We already know Edmonton's not a great defensive team, so we're going to bring in all for Ekman Larson, because clearly that's going to be the difference maker for this team. Looking at the Metro Division, we're going to have the Washington Capitals taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. Washington is going to come out flying in the first period. They're looking so good, they're scoring more goals than Philly's taking shots. Yeah, this game's already over. Let's just keep moving on. In the second period, Washington's going to be picking up another goal while Philly's only taking five shots. Nah, actually, what's this team doing? You know how hockey works, right? Eventually, someone's going to be able to find the back of the net for Philly, and that's going to be Travis Konecki. And in the final minute of this game, Philly's going to be picking up one more, but of course, it's not going to be enough, so Washington's taking this one 4-2. I'm going to bring a bit more offensive firepower to the Washington Capitals, so we're bringing Cam Mackinson onto the team. With our final matchup of the first round, we're going to see the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa's offense just seems to be unstoppable. They're picking up the first three goals of the game, so we're entering the first intermission with Tampa having a 3-1 lead. And this offense just won't stop, so they're going to pick up another two goals in the second period, and this game's all wrapped up. Or I thought it was all wrapped up. Toronto's going to be scoring three unanswered in the third period, and they're making this a one-goal game heading into the final seconds. But a four-goal comeback's just going to be too much for the Toronto Maple Leafs and Tampa's taking this one 5-4. That last game against Toronto proved that Tampa Bay's offense is absolutely elite. Although their defense could use a bit of work, so I'm going to bring Mark Giordano onto the team. So we're officially down to our final four teams. The Nashville Predators, Edmonton Oilers, Washington Capitals, and Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's start off in the Western Conference and we got the Nashville Predators taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Tomasino is going to be picking up the lone goal in the first period, so Nashville's taking a 1-0 lead entering the intermission. And in the second period, we're going to see goals from Roman Yossi and Jonathan Taves, so now Nashville's got themselves a 3-0 lead. Maybe Oliver Ekman Larson is having an impact on this team. In the third period, Edmonton's finally going to get on the board, but Nashville's going to be picking up another one. But one goal clearly isn't going to be enough for the Edmonton Oilers. Their offense isn't going to be able to get sparked, so they're going to be falling in a 4-1 game. After that fantastic performance from Edmonton's defense, I've got to take one of their defensemen away, so Darnell Nurse is coming to the Nashville Predators. So one of our finalists has already been decided, so let's find out who's coming out of the East, and that's going to be either the Washington Capitals or Tampa Bay Lightning. And it's going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're picking up four goals in the first period. Yeah, we're just going to skip right to the end of the game. Tampa's going to be picking up another goal in the third period. OV might be scoring here, but they're not making a five goal comeback in the final minute. So Washington's falling. And one player from the Washington Capitals that did improve to their prime was Alexander Ovechkin. So now he's joining the Tampa Bay Lightning. So now we have our final matchup set. And that's going to be the Nashville Predators taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think Tampa's taking this one. After all the players they've stolen away from their opponents and the amazing core they already have, I just can't see this team being stopped. Jeff Skinner is going to get the goal scoring started in the first period. And in the second, he's going to be picking up another goal and Victor Hemmings getting his first. So Tampa now has themselves a 3-0 lead entering the final 20 minutes. Tampa's 
looking to expand their lead. So Mark Giordano is going to be picking up a power play goal late in the third period. So here we are in the final seconds. I don't really think it should be too much of a surprise that the Tampa Bay Lightning are taking down the Nashville Predators. This Tampa team just looks too elite. The one thing I can say though is going through all these rosters and putting everyone back into their prime, you realize how many players are technically still in the league. I completely forgot about guys like Ben Bishop, Ryan Kessler, Andrew Ladd, Brian Little. Technically, they're still in the NHL because they're still under contract. Where are they even up to? 